Hello everyone, welcome to ECMATH. I'm Mr. Eck, and today we're going to talk about fractional exponents. Uh, so sometimes these are called rational exponents, but remember that rational numbers are the subset of numbers that are fractions or of the form of fractions or decimals. So rational exponents are exponents that are of fraction or decimal form. Things like 2 to the 1 half or 3 to the 0.68. Uh, are examples of rational exponents. They actually have a perfectly valid, wonderful meaning and uh, really are not any different than any other exponent. So let's get into the definition. Um, we'll start slow. x to the 1 over n, so you have like a, a fraction, is the same as the nth root of x. Those mean the same thing and I can quickly show you why that's true. Um, say I have x to the 1 over n and the nth root of x. And I don't know, what, are they the same? Huh? What's going on? Well, what if I took that and raise it to the nth power? And I took this and raise it to the nth power. x to the 1 over n to the n would be the same as x to the n over n, which would be x and the nth root of x to the n, by definition, would also equal x. And so if you have two things, when you raise do the same thing to both things, and you get the same thing, what does it mean? It means the original things must have been the same. And so when you have a, a fractional exponent, that is the same as a root. Furthermore, let's go quickly and more abstractly, if I have a number on the top of that fraction, uh, that can be thought of as x to the 1 over n to the m. Or we might write it as the nth root of x to the m, uh, m. But we can also think about this in reverse as x to the m to the 1 over n which is the same as the nth root, so this is now putting the radical on the outside, of x to the m. These are the same. And they mean the same thing as x to the m over n. Uh, and you can choose any of those three to express your uh, results or, or solve your problems. So since we already know about exponents, and we already know about roots, now that we know what fractional uh, powers are, it should be easy to think about them in terms of roots. So let's do something like this. 125 to the 4 thirds. There's two ways that you could write this, and one of them is a lot smarter than the other. Uh, I could write this as 125 to the 4th, and then cube root it. Now if I want to do this, what do I have to do? Well, i got to go, oh, 125 to the 4th, oh, I'm tired of math already. There's no way I'm cube rooting that number. No way. So instead, let's do it this way. This is the same as the cube root of 125 to the fourth power. Cube root of 125 is positive 5. Positive 5 to the fourth power is 625. It's the same as 25 squared. So that's how you would evaluate 125 to the 4 thirds without your calculator. You won't have your calculator on most of these problems, uh, so be able to do it without. 16 to the negative 5 halves. Oh my gosh. So we got fractions, we got roots, and we have negatives. When you have a negative, just like with a ne like negative fraction, just like with negative 2, what you do is first turn it into a reciprocal. So this is the same as 1 over 16 to the 5 halves. That's your first move. That's what happens with the negative. Then, we're going to think about this as 1 over the square root of 16 to the fifth. And it's half means square root, so technically there's, there could be a little index of 2 there, but we don't write it because it's just a square root, and that's the standard. All right, that's the same as 1 over... Well, the square root of 16 is 4, so this is the same as 1 over 4 to the 5th. 4 to the 5th is, well, I got my calculator out here. 
10, 24. I could have figured that one out. If I didn't know 4 to the 5th, I'd be fine saying that's the same as 2 to the 10th, and then I could just count powers of 2 if I wanted to. Uh, but it is 10, 24. All right, let's, let's bring it up here. Uh, so we have 3x to the 2 thirds times 4x to the 3 fourths. Now there's something a little tricky here, uh, which is that I have an x, so I'm not going to be able to evaluate these. I don't know what x is. I don't even know if it's positive or negative or, or what's going on with it. Um, so what you can do, though, is think about these as you know different operations or operations together. First of all, the 3 and the 4 are just multiplied on here. It's 3 times this and 4 times that, and these are multiplied together. So you can take the 3 and the 4 and just write those out front. And then I have 3 times 4 times x to the 2 thirds times x to the 3 uh, fourths. Now, 2 thirds times 3 fourths, so what, what do you do here? Well, remember, when you have exponents of the same base, you're supposed to add the exponents. So this is going to be the same as x to the 2 thirds plus 3 fourths times, I'll write it 12 out there. Now this is the time where I would go over on the side, do a little bit of scratch work. 2 thirds plus 3 fourths is going to be, I guess I need to be in twelfths. So this is 8 twelfths plus 9 twelfths or 17 twelfths. Nothing reduces. So I would write my final answer, and it's not going to be pretty, as 12x to the 17 twelfths. Those 12s don't cancel, by the way. Don't get too excited. Um, I prefer this one. You could also write this as 12 times the 12th root of x to the 17. But honestly, that's worse looking. I want kind of the most concise answer, and putting it in a root doesn't really express any different meaning. So for this one, I would leave them as fractional exponents. Now we get a fraction problem. This is going to be a great test of both your exponent rules and your root rules. First thing I see is I have an exponent outside of parentheses, so that needs to be applied to both terms. Um, and I'll apply that and simplify. So 2 to the 4th, I'll just write as 2 to the 4th, that's uh, 16. And then it's y to the 5, nope, 4 fifths, 4 times 1 fifth. And then I have a y to the 3 over 10. Okay, when I'm doing exponents like this, the rule is that you subtract them. So when I do this, I'm going to have to do 4 fifths minus 3 tenths. That's the same as 8 tenths minus 3 tenths or 5 tenths. Oh, look at this. This is beautiful. 5 tenths, which is 1 half. So this is going to simplify to uh, 2 to the 4th is 16 times y to the 1 half because of 4 fifths minus 3 tenths. And this I might write as 16 times the square root of y if I really wanted to. And that's how I would simplify this one. Just a couple more, uh, and I want to kind of get into the more abstract realm. So here I just have the fourth root of x to the twelfth, and I want to show you how fractional exponents can be super useful here. What I could do is write this as the fourth root of x to the fourth times the fourth root of x to the fourth times the fourth root of x to the fourth, uh, which would give me x times x times x, or x cubed. That would be the traditional way to write it without using any fractional exponents. But I think there might be an easier way, and the easier way is this. This is the same as x to the 12 over 4. Wait, 12 over 4, that's 3. So it's a little easier to simplify things this way. There is one complication, though, and it's going to bring us back to that thing we started this discussion on roots with way back when in the other video was about the absolute values. So often in a problem like this, there will be a direction that says assume x is greater than zero. Um, and if that's true, then if that assumption is there, then this is the correct answer. Everything is reduced nicely. However, what if that assumption was not there? Get out of there. Then I need to look at both of these, and I want to think about what happens. Um, 
execute. If I have an input that's positive, I'm going to get an output that's also positive, right? Because a positive cubed is a positive. But if I have an input, and if I have an input that's negative, I'll get an output that's negative. So I'm not, you know, I guess I should say, here's x, here's x cubed. But let's think about the original expression. Uh, so x and then the fourth root of x to the twelfth. If my in, and that's out, if my input is positive, uh, well, x to the twelfth will be positive, and the fourth root will be positive, so my output would be positive. But if my x is negative, it will be, be taken to the twelfth power, which makes it positive. Um, so it is allowed to be negative, but then I'm taking the positive fourth root. Remember the assumption. So the output would be positive. Now notice that that's different behavior for negative x's. That's why the problem will often say, oh no, just assume x is positive because negative x's are, are bad. Um, however, uh, what I would really say is that in the original, it makes, it's, uh, we'll say it's always positive. So the way I can fix my answer is by saying, ah, turning the x cubed into absolute value of x cubed. So if x is not restricted to be less than or equal to zero, I think you do need that absolute value on there to make sure that it has the same sign behavior as the original. If you, and this is something that can happen now with the exponents in math like this, is you can almost reduce it so much you lose information. You don't want to reduce things so much that you lose information from them. Uh, so I'm putting the absolute value back to kind of preserve the information about how my uh, original should always be positive. But again, most of the time, I think these problems have an assumption about x being greater than 0, so you don't have to worry about it. But if you feel like worrying about it, there it is. Um, and, you know, we're at the, the end of the third video, so I think it is time here for us to also worry about it. And I want to do the uh, kind of, not the inverse, but the opposite of this is my next problem, the 12th root of x to the 4th. All right, so this could be thought of as x to the uh, 4 over 12 which I could simplify into x to the 1 third, which I could further simplify to uh, the cube root of x. Seems fair, right? Uh, but I want to check again, did, uh, since I don't have any restrictions on x, did I change the positive negative behavior of this? Uh, how does this behave with positives and negatives? We'll do just in and out. If I input a positive, I'll get out a positive. If I input a negative, is that allowed? Yes, because I can take a negative to the fourth. A twelfth root, though, will always be positive. But cube root, if I input a positive, I'll get a positive. But if I input a negative, the cube root of a negative, excuse me, is a negative. So again, I have this discrepancy between the values. So if I really want to reduce this, I need the original, right, this is the original. That's what I'm claiming to simplify. So I can't change that. I need this to be always positive. So what am I going to do on the answer? Yes, it simplifies to q root x, but I would put an absolute value around it to indicate that, yeah, it simplifies, but the original was always positive, and q root x actually isn't always positive. That's the last example. I do, again, want to iterate that uh, I think sometimes students spend 95% of their study time worrying about that like last example and whether there's an absolute value or not. And obviously it's important or I wouldn't teach it to you, but it's not as important as every other fundamental in the section. So please do prioritize your study time. Um, but that said, if you have questions about any of this, absolute values, roots, reduction, fractions, where did I get those numbers from, please let me, uh, shoot me an email or leave me a question in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. It's been a long one, but I will see you in the next section.